Hey guys, it's Gaia, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some of the best apps that I've found for studying, revision, and productivity. These are some apps that I've used all throughout my education from GCSE to A-level and now my undergraduate psychology degree. I really hope you do find these apps helpful and if you have any more suggestions from other apps that you use when you're studying or working on a task, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. Come join us. I'd love to have you. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into this video. So the first app I want to talk to you guys about is Productive, which is a free and easy to use habit tracker, which you can use to track your progress and set personal goals. You can also set yourself reminders for your habit list for each time of the day and stay on track with useful statistics. I really like this app because it helps remind me of my specific daily goals, such as making sure I drink more water every day. The next app I want to talk about is Researcher. Now, honestly, as a university student, researching previous literature and journal articles can literally become the bane of your life. No one likes researching for hours and reading through hundreds of papers only to find you can reference like one tiny thing. I recently discovered Researcher and honestly it is such a lifesaver. With over 15,000 journals across 10 research areas you simply choose which journals you want to follow and it will create like a personalised feed. This is literally such a helpful tool especially if you're currently writing an essay or planning a dissertation project like myself. The next app I'm going to talk about is Quizlet and I'm pretty sure sure most of you guys will have heard of Quizlet. If you find flashcards helpful when you're revising, chances are you will really like this app. Not only can you create your own flashcards, but you can also browse through thousands of other flashcards created by other people. Quizlet was one of those apps that I used throughout GCSE and A-level and helped me so much because I literally have like the worst memory when it comes to like memorising like key facts and dates. I strongly recommend it if you are also currently taking your GCSEs and A-levels. Another app that I remember using in GCSEs was also one called Gojimo. Um, I'm not sure if it's still on the App Store, but if it is, I also recommend that one. It is quite like Quizlet, but it like tests you as well. And I literally used it so much in GCSE, especially for like triple science and when I was revising for things like GCSE textiles and I needed to know like key facts about the materials. Gojimo is also a very good app for that. Speaking of GCSEs, I want to thank the sponsor for this week's video, First Rate Tutors. Even though I am now in my third year of university, I can still remember the days where I literally struggled so much of English at GCSE. This is where First Rate Tutors comes in. They have an amazing course that covers both English literature and language papers and the spoken assessment exams, meaning you're all prepped to smash those exams. The course includes 44 hours of content and comes with not only in-depth lectures but also past paper examples and model answers. The best thing about this is that you can talk to the teacher directly so it's like having a tutor on hand whenever you need help. This is such an amazing resource to get your hands on. Whether you're a current GCSE student, retaking your English GCSE or just simply interested in learning more about English. It's so easy to use and is a one-time payment, meaning you have access to this course for life. Okay, so this is what the GCSE course looks like if you are interested. As you can see, like, you get all of the books and anthologies, just, you know, just in case you are doing different ones in the exams, so don't worry. As you can see, like, there is so much detail in this. Like, if we scroll back up to Macbeth, which I remember doing in GCSE, like, can we appreciate how in-depth each of the acts are like the fact that first rate tutors has 61 minutes solely just for act one let alone the rest of the play and of course if you are one of those people that struggle with the poetry anthology not only do they show you the poem and the analysis that comes with it they also give an overview of the poet themselves and their background you know because if you are doing GCSE English you'll know that sometimes the context of the author is really important when you are analysing a poem. As I mentioned before, I did not have this amazing resource when I was doing my GCSEs and I honestly wish I did. If I'd had first rate tutors helping me throughout GCSE English, I know I'd have definitely done so much better. So for anyone who is doing their GCSEs right now, who watches my channel or is retaking a GCSE, I strongly recommend their course. As I mentioned before, the level of detail is just outstanding. Right now this great course is at a discounted price so if you'd like to check it out you can find the link at 
the top of my description below. Now let's get back into the video. So next up is study music. Now sometimes you'll find if you are studying in silence for a while it can be really hard to concentrate on the thing that you're doing. So many people do choose to study or work to music. Studies have shown that things like white noise and lo-fi beats are actually really good for concentration when you're studying. Background music can also enhance performance and cognitive tasks. Study music is one of the many apps that you can find on the app store that is really good for accessing study music. Obviously you can use Spotify as well, there are so many playlists across Spotify that have lo-fi beats. But either way, if you are struggling with concentrating, I really do recommend studying to music. The app Study Music has a great variety of music, all for different tasks that you might be doing, such as memorising or reading. Not only that, but it also allows you to listen to the music offline, just in case you find you don't have a stable Wi-Fi connection, for example if you're in the library. So the next one I'm going to talk about is Cold Turkey. Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you might recognise that I use something similar to Cold Turkey on my laptop, but it's a plugin called Self Control. Um, I'm literally always talking about it in my other study related videos. It is actually so great if you're one of those people that can't resist online shopping while you're meant to be writing an essay. I for one am really guilty of that. Cold Turkey is basically just the app version of self control and it temporarily blocks everything on your phone and like I said is amazing if you struggle with procrastinating on your phone. However once the block has started for the amount of time that you have set you can't stop it. Even if you do come out of the app it will still have everything else Blocked. So do bear that in mind if you are planning to use this app. However, if you don't want to use cold turkey but still struggle with phone addiction, the next app, Forest, is probably the best thing for you. You guys might have also heard of this app. Many study tubers and many students also use this app. I honestly find it so cute and also like really effective at the same time. So basically you set the time that you want to study on Forest and it plants like a little seed on your screen. If you go off the app at any time, the plant will die. But if you do work for the amount of time that you have set, the seed will grow into a lovely little tree and you will actually be able to collect coins that you can then spend on other types of trees to grow. Also if you reach a certain amount of coins there is also this part of the app where you can even use those coins that you've collected to opt to pay for a real tree to be grown which is obviously really great for the environment especially at the moment with all the global warming that's happening and all the deforestation. Just think it's a win-win situation. You're studying and being productive and you're able to plant another tree in the world. Like, doesn't that sound amazing? There is also a free version of Forest as well if you don't want to pay, since the original version is not free. And the last app I want to talk about today, guys, is Headspace. Especially in this current climate, it can be so easy to feel overwhelmed and stressed. So Headspace was created by a former monk and is designed to guide you through meditation and mindfulness. The three to 10 minute sessions focus on things like anxiety, sleep, breathing, focus, happiness, and much more. Another app that my friend Miranda recently recommended to me called Mindshift is also another good app for anxiety. If you would like me to do a whole video on apps that I find really helpful for anxiety and stress, coming from someone who does suffer from social anxiety and panic attacks, let me know down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to film that for you guys. So those are all my best apps today for studying. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video helped. If it did, please give this video a massive thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Like I say all the time, it honestly means the world. So thank you so much for watching, I love you all and I'll see you in the next video for more university content. Bye!